All right, so continuing on to part two of my prepper series, my two-part prepper series. I don't know if that's long enough to call a series, but uh, number six. So we talked about bug in versus bug out, skills versus possessions, bugging out solo versus a group, weapons, uh, kinds that use ammo versus kinds that don't use ammo, excuse me, food, growing versus storing. So on to six, communication. Um, obviously super important. I don't know Morse code. I probably should. You know, I don't even think I have it written down. I should at least print out Morse code and put it in my backpack or something. It's something you would Google if the shit hit the fan, but you wouldn't be able to. It's kind of ironic. So, you know, things like that, you got to get into non-internet type of thinking for how to survive. Ham radio is kind of a obvious one. A lot of people like it because the distance um, it's an active community, so you can practice your skills in the modern non-SHTF situation. VHF radios, you know, I don't have a ham radio. I don't have any UHF, VHF radios. Um, my communication plan is make friends with the ham radio guy. Not a great plan, but it's my current plan. I, at some point, might get into it. I don't don't have a strong desire right now to. I have a buddy that's really into it. Maybe I'll bug him about it, but... Um, it's going to be important. Not just locally, but over longer distances. So, something to keep in mind. You know, I'm going to have to develop this further. Um, I didn't really think about how much I could flush out each subject when I put it down here, but definitely be thinking about how you're going to communicate. You know, two-way radios are good. Um, they typically have more line of sight. So, you know, if you're in mountains or, you know, you're in the middle of a city or something, it won't be as good, but um, something to consider, communication. Number seven, value to the community. This is kind of an interesting one. So assuming you're bugging in and you're going to be with a group, I think an important question to ask yourself is, what are you going to bring to the whole? Um, you know, I don't know what you do now or what you plan on doing or what you have done, but no matter how old you are, or if you're working, not working, retired, if you think you're very talented or you think you don't have a lot of skills, it's going to be, I won't say critical, but it would be really, really helpful if you had something to bring to the table. Um, doesn't have to be an amazing, amazing ability. Um, it really doesn't. It would be nice if it was kind of niche. I mentioned some stuff like plumbing skills, household skills, sewing, food, you know, gardening, cooking, health, the things that we sort of take for granted, you know, fixing a car, f fixing anything. Um, but maybe you play an instrument, you know, maybe you're a good tutor, maybe you're a good babysitter. Um, maybe you're just friendly. Maybe you just like talking to people. Maybe you're have, you know, good endurance. You're a runner. You know, I, I don't know what it is, but just think the, the, I think to kind of go on a tangent, you know, one of the cool things about life is learning what you're good at and learning how you can, um, you know, give back to society, to the community, to the world at large. So part of prepping for me is, you know, learning what my strengths are and what my weaknesses are and building up my weaknesses a little bit, but, you know, focusing on my strengths. If I know how to work on cars, I'm not going to go try to, you know, become a copy machine repair guy because I think I want to add more skills, you know. It's kind of a random example, but the, the point is I'm much more comfortable improving my auto mechanic skill or improving my handyman skill or adding a skill that's sort of ancillary to that, like plumbing or welding or pipe work or drywall work or more carpentry skills, um, you know, building onto my sort of handy repertoire. But, you know, whatever it is, if you know things that you're good at or you don't know thing what you're good at, um, 
it's really rewarding to find skills that you have, maybe skills that aren't super common, and find other people with those skills and try to better yourself. Doesn't matter if a lot of people do it or if, you know, if it's something really, really unique and not a lot of people do it. Like we had a guy in our class uh, bring in some miniatures. He built like a little miniature engine and he just did stuff in miniatures. And it's not a super common thing, but, you know, it's something he enjoyed. So whatever value you can bring, if you don't know what it is or you do know, just try to think as you go through life, you know, what can I do? How could I help? If things were all crazy, what would I do to help? What would be the thing that I contribute? Say, if you had a little shop, if you had a booth, a table, if someone said, hey, give me your business card at the end of the world and uh, I'll pass it out to my friends, what would it say? So, number eight, short term to long term. Or in other words, how do you go from, oh, the power's off to a week to the power's off forever? That's, you know, it's really hard to talk about, mostly because, you know, I have no idea what I'm talking about, like many of us. But I think the biggest component to whether or not it's going to be smooth or rough for you is how much you prepared. If you focused on skills, on community, on knowing how to make or gather or procure what you need versus just buy it or hope that you own it or have it, um, you know, you're going to be better off. If you've spent a little bit of time every week, every month, every year on the different areas of your prepping life, you're going to be better off. If your plan was, I'm just going to go to Walmart when things start getting crazy and then I'll be fine. I don't want to store all the stuff. I'll just go drop a thousand bucks on whatever I can find. Walmart parking lots could be a little crazy on days like that. <laughs> so. so if you want to make the transition um, smooth, you know, put effort into it. You know, if you've never been camping, go camping. If you've never slept outside, you know, sleep outside. If you've never changed your oil, change your oil. doesn't mean you have to start working on everything on your car. But, you know, get out of your comfort zone. Um, take a trip. Make a video. Talk with people. Um, make a friend who wants to prep with you. You know, don't be don't be embarrassed to talk about it. Doesn't doesn't have to mean you're a you know you're a kook living in a bunker or a cave or something because you want to know how to make fire with your hands. Um, it's a very I think it's a very noble thing to be able to take care of yourself. And I think right now most of us don't take care of ourselves. You know, we rely on each other in this whole big crazy community. So put a little effort into it as you go. It's a lot easier than trying to get everything together at the last minute, which we all know is it's going to be impossible. It's going to be impossible to get your stuff together at the last second. So, so don't. Number nine, how to fund prepping or how to pay for it. Not fun, like have fun. Although prepping should be fun. I'll change number nine to fun prepping. Maybe, um, full-time job, easiest way, obviously, uh, don't put prepping stuff on your credit card. I feel like this goes without being said, but, uh, don't do it. It's not that important. Interest will probably get you before the end of the world. So, you know, unless it's like you don't have a rifle and you want a rifle or you don't have a, you know, water filter and you just have to have a water filter, but you know, credit cards, you want more money for your preps, stop paying for stuff with a credit card. Watch Dave Ramsey. He'll talk some sense into you. Um, side jobs. I do side stuff. Handyman's kind of my full-time thing right now. I also do a little bit of flipping. Um, sell stuff on eBay, not very successfully, I might add. That's kind of why I'm going to school to get a real job because if I was making a hundred grand uh, flipping, maybe I would just stay flipping, but I'm not, so. Um, flipping's expensive. It doesn't have to be super expensive, but it's gonna cost money, so you should budget for it. Right now, I'm sort of, excuse me, picking and choosing, you know, rifle here, a little bit extra water there, um, stuff like that. My, my short-term supply goals are mostly food, water, first aid related. Um, I have crap for first aid. My, I won't even show you guys my first aid kit. I, 
which goes back to number nine, funding. Um, I'd love to drop 60 bucks on some good first aid stuff, some surgical tools and some, you know, some good blood clot stuff and haven't done it yet, but on the to-do list. So in short, put some money aside for prepping. doesn't have to be a lot, but back to number eight, you know, how are you going to make the transition? If you plan and you fund it, if it's just 20 bucks a month, 30 bucks a month, you could prep all right for 30 bucks a month. Maybe not for a family of four, maybe not for a nuclear winter, but it's better than nothing, you know? So put some money aside and you'll be doing a little bit better. Uh, number 10 on being skeptical. I think the best way to look at if things are going to get crazy is at least the way I look at it is just plan for them not, you know, I plan for the world being normal. I also have a plan for things not being normal, but if you look at a weighted average, I weight the normal at about, you know, well over 99.9%. I, I don't know if world getting crazy is one in a thousand, one in 10,000, one in a million It's one in something. It is one in something. And that's, I think, why I prep. Because it's not one in zero. It's one in something. It's whether it's 10,000, 1,500, or a million, um, you know, there's a greater chance I get hit crossing the street. So it's not like, you know, I have a plan for avoiding that the rest of my life. But the point is, it probably won't happen. Probably not. So don't plan your life around it going crazy. Don't think, well, screw my job and screw my credit and screw my mortgage and I'm just going to peace out and live in the woods and society will be over so it doesn't really matter. Don't do that. Plan for society being regular forever and if all you ever do is have extra food and a little bit of survival skills, I don't think you're going to be that much worse off. So anyways, I know this has kind of been a long two-part video. Um, and my voice is a little harsh from speaking for like a half an hour, but I just wanted to share some of my thoughts on prepping. Um, please subscribe if you want to see some more videos about prepping. Excuse me, feel free to leave a comment, and thanks for watching.